Hey there guys, my name is Joe and I run a YouTube channel called Homesteadonomics where I do a variety of different do-it-yourself projects around my homestead. Today's project is a chicken coop that I'm going to be roofing in Onduro roofing panels. So I'm going to take you along for the process, show you some of the prep work, the tools that we'll need, and then we'll get on to the install. Before we can begin installing the roof panels, we first need to make sure we have an appropriate roof structure in place first. This can either be in the form of horizontally spaced purlins or a solid decking surface like OSB or plywood, just so long as it's half an inch in thickness. Once you have that down, then you'll want to weatherproof your roof with a combination of tar paper or other underlayment and a flashing. At the end, I'll show you some other options if you don't want to use flashing. The tools you need for this project will include a tape measure and something to mark your panels with like a marker or a pencil, a hammer and 3 inch washered nails, or you can also use 3 inch washered screws as well. And then you'll need a utility knife or a circular saw to cut the panels. With the panels you'll also need to pick up ridge caps as well as foam ventilated closure strips. This will allow airflow underneath the panels but keep any critters out. The first step in the installation will be to measure and mark your panels and then cut them to length. You can cut them with a utility knife or a saw. Before you set your panels in place, you're going to want to make sure you have the ventilated foam closure strips on the underside of the panel. They can also be tucked in at the end, but I like to hold them when I'm placing the panels. On your side panels, you'll want to make sure that you asphyx them to the edge, keeping the edge nice and flush, as well as having an inch and three quarter overhang over the eaves. One quick thing to remember when you overlap panels is that you want to overlap them in the direction of your predominant winds. For instance, if my predominant winds come from this direction, I want to make sure that the windward panel always overlaps on top of the leeward panel. Once your panels have been lined up and fastened at the edges, you can now begin to mark your nail holes over the rest of the panel. I like to use a straight edge when doing so. Nails in intermediate courses will be placed every other corrugation, while edge courses will receive nails at every corrugation. It's important to note that nails should be fastened only through the tops or the crowns of each corrugation and not so tightly as to crush the corrugation. At this point, all of my panels are fastened down with the ventilated closure strips underneath the nails. The next step is going to be adding the ridge cap, or if you have a larger roof and need to put more panels, you'll just need to make sure that you're overlapping them by at least a minimum of five and three quarter inches. But for myself, I'm gonna add the ridge cap, but before I do so, I'm gonna add some more vented closure strips underneath it. And just as with the panels, I'm making sure that the nails just make snug contact with the surface of the ridge cap and don't crush or deform any of the corrugations. And once your ridge cap is completely fastened, you can then cut it down the middle and complete your trim detail. And this can further be dressed up by cutting the excess material so as to follow the profile of your existing flashing. Something that may be useful to you if you are in the planning phases of building your roof or trying to figure out how many panels you need to purchase is to remember that these corrugations on these panels are spaced exactly four inches apart. So that means if you have a roof that is divisible by four inches, like say 68 inches wide or 64 inches wide, you will end up with the panels exactly meeting the edges of your roof perfectly. However, if your roof happens to be a little bit off by an inch or two one way or another, it's also important to note that these panels have a bit of flexibility in them in an accordion fashion. 
So say if your panels come out to be slightly too short, you can simply just elongate them, fasten them down with your nails or screws, and you can have a proper flush edge. And the same is true if they are just a bit too long, you can simply compress them, fasten them down until you get the reveal that you're looking for. If you're not gonna be using a traditional flashing in which to protect the edge of your roof, it's important to remember there's a couple other options from which to choose from. The first and probably the cheapest is to simply cut an extra corrugation off of one of your main roof panels and use this in the form of a flashing. It'll simply tuck underneath the final corrugation and act in the same way that a traditional flashing will. It'll be asphyxed with that final corrugation and then you'll also fasten it along the side. Another option is to use extra ridge cap or purchase extra ridge cap to use in a total wrapping fashion along the edge of your roof. This will probably be a more expensive option, but if you are in a high weather area with lots of moisture, this will serve to give you some extra protection in that it's wrapping over more of the corrugations and more of the edge of the roof. And the final option and something that is more popular in Europe that will eliminate the need for flashing is to simply extend this fascia board up past the roof deck and into the final corrugation. Here's a model that I built to show you how this is gonna look. If you can imagine this is the roof deck and this is the fascia board, your roofing panel will simply sit with the final corrugation over that fascia board and that's where it will be fastened. This will give you an appropriate overhang as well as the appropriate weatherproofing. One quick tip that may be helpful to you when you're getting ready to finish off your ridge caps with the folded ends is to make sure you have a warm enough outside air temperature. If it's too cool, these ends may not fold over nicely and they could have some splitting in the paint. One trick that I found helpful is to use a standard hair dryer. I stole this one from my wife and simply warm the areas that you're planning on folding and it's gonna give you a nice clean fold and you won't have any splitting of the paint. Another tip that may be helpful in dealing with the foam closure strips is to preset your nails and simply asphyx the closure strip to the back side of the panel before placing it upon the roof. Well guys, the project's all finished. I think it turned out great. Um, I hope this was a helpful and informative video for you. If you do have any further questions, check out the Onduro website or pick up one of these installation guides at your local Lowe's and uh, good luck on your project.